actually, let's start there because H and the Soul. Yes. Can you explain a bit about that for those that don't know you? That could be a little bit confusing. Of course. So um, I I have a project on the Isle of Man where I want to develop a 180 acre space habitat, and I believe that we need new governing systems for our new world. And I think that when we begin to start looking at how the nation state has evolved, we start looking at the future of environment. I've had the support of many environmental scientists, academics, uh, diplomats from around the world that believe that we have to reimagine a new type of governing system for how things work. And HM The Soul uh, is my role uh, for this 180-acre space habitat. It's a project that looks at a station that is 180 acres that travels the seas, that looks at the future of of our planet and develops something that's more akin to, I think, science fiction than the scientific reality that a lot of people imagine. But I believe it's vital for how we look at our climate, our heritage, and the understanding for the future of the human race. And and the status of that role is yes. king. Yes, it is. Right. So, But it's a meritocratic monarchy. So what that means is the fact that it doesn't necessarily mean that an individual is born as a monarch. What it means is that you have uh, somewhat of a, like a philosopher king, an individual that has the ability to to lead and inspire and encourage, but they are voted in. So it's very much a crown democracy, which is what I believe the Isle of Man should inevitably become in the future. It's an interesting one, isn't it? Because, of course, you have been very uh, vocal about your uh, support and mm. aims for equality and yes. diversification. And in a role where you use the word monarchy, it certainly sounds like it's at odds with the idea of equality. I believe that the historical notion of monarchy is more inclined to individuals having an understanding of accountability. I think that on the Isle of Man today, we are a still, we're still a constitutional monarchy. Uh, we have a Lord of Man who is the ceremonial head of state. We have a lieutenant governor. We have a chief minister. We have a president of Ten Lord. And I believe that we have to begin to start reimagining and redefining what those roles mean in the 21st century. Uh, it's been told that the Isle of Man is freer than what it has ever been before in the past, but I, I, I'm willing to challenge that. Uh, the United Kingdom still has paramount powers over our legislational system, over our foreign trade, over our diplomatic uh, connections, as well as our borders and in HS. So I think that we are not that free or as free as we may think. I think that it is time for the people to decide who they want as their head of state and to give people more power than anything that they've ever had before, specifically here on the Isle of Man and in Douglas South. Well, we've spoken quite broadly about what you'd like to see into the future for the Isle of Man, but drilling down into some specific policies, what yes. do you support and what do you propose in this by-election? Since 2014, uh, first arriving on the island, I've been a huge champion and a fighter for energy independence, international trade, and university education. My background as an academic, as an architectural theorist and historian, and also an interdisciplinarian, I've looked at what the Isle of Man can be, and I champion and I fight for an ambitious educational system that facilitates immigration as well as talented individuals coming to the Isle of Man and helping the Isle of Man to realize what its ancestral or historical past was, was a forward-thinking leader. I do not believe that being lock in step with the United Kingdom is the wisest of decisions. I believe that like Liechtenstein or Norway or Luxembourg, the Isle of Man has the opportunity to redefine what it is going to be within the 21st century. And if we were ever looking for an opportunity to becoming more independent or even sovereign, this would be the time. This by-election is responsible for 8% of the constituencies of our island. We have the power within the next 12 months to help foster and redesign what the future of the Isle of Man will be. You've said that you're unique in this campaign in, in that you can freely travel back and forth to America. Yes. Uh, which would bring with it future deals with <laughs> trade and various things like that. But you're also talking about uh, independence and sovereignty. Yes. So which is more important? I believe that independence is only achieved through our diplomatic connections. The Isle of Man right now is subject to whatever the United Kingdom throws our way. If we look at it right now, we don't have foreign embassies. We pay a hundred grand for a office in Brussels where virtually no one is present. 
one of the key things that I would be doing in my very first 100 days as an MHK for the Douglas South constituency is ensuring that our international trade arm is there to receive offers from the from the world outside. It's one of the key things that by being on the Isle of Man, we sometimes forget that we are part of a bigger world. And all of the wonderful things that we have here, I believe, can be shared. But more importantly, we have so much opportunity here. And I think that by having an office that's there to diplomatically uh, trade and provide envoys and foreign investment and revenue streams to the island is the only way that we're going to find ourselves all out of the issue from the COVID-19 depletion of our NI fund.